And today we're going to talk about the bucket theory and your metabolism. If you recall from our earlier lessons, we talked about the bucket theory, about what this requires. And just for a quick review, what that means is, is your bucket is your total amount of resources. So this is, let me put this up, your resources that's available for your biology. So at this, we've got enzymes, we've got probiotics, okay? These, these two are like, those are the workers inside our body. And then we have things like protein and we've got fats and we got carbs. And then we have, you know, things like minerals and vitamins, okay? Of course, we, you can go up to the other level, which we, you know, how much oxygen you have available, you know, and water, right? So these are some of the main resources. There's some other things in there, but let's just focus on this for right now. This is the total resources available. And any time that you have a drop in any one of these to an excessive level, then you can run into various problems. Now, well, how that happens is here, right here in your bucket, this is your burn rate. This is, this is your lifestyle. And we're going to get to this, how it relates to metabolism in just a second. So this is how much of these units, oxygen, water, how much minerals, vitamins, proteins, fats, carbs, probiotics, and enzymes that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis. And keep in mind that this is going to fluctuate a certain amount based on what you're doing. Obviously, if you're in a high stress position or you're working really hard or you're maybe training for a contest, your burn rate or the hole in your bucket, if you will, is going to be a little bigger. Uh, if you're chilling out on a vacation on a, you know, a nice beach, some tropical sunset, your burn rate's probably a little bit less. You're not exhausting these things. You're hopefully recharging. And that's what a lot of vacations were originally designed for was to kind of refill up your resources kind of lost in the modern world nowadays. But so keep understanding this is your lifestyle. Now, a big component of your lifestyle, okay, is your metabolism. Okay? And what that means is is how much energy your body burns on a regular basis from your day to day. So, for example, most athletes burn more energy than people who are sedentary or living, and that's a big problem right now. Because, you know, in the modern world, we've developed these lifestyles that are way more sedentary than we have at any time in the past. I mean, the World Health Organization, you know, I think it was 50 or 60 years ago, recommended 20 miles of walking every single day as the basic amount of exercise. Today, we're hoping people go like, you know, 10,000 steps, which is a lot smaller. So just to give you an idea of how much things have changed and almost everything's automatic, we drive, we don't you know, walk as far, we used to handle horses and things like that, or plow fields, that's all different nowadays. So you gotta realize is the modern lifestyle, interesting enough, while it's physically less draining, it's more mentally draining. So we create a, a different level of exhaustion due to stress, and we produce a lot of stress hormones, which a lot of people are feeling thanks to the influx of, you know, electronic information and when more data, more information, we haven't quite adapted to. There's some other factors that influences things like oxidative stress. Oxidative stress, well, that can be anything from, as we said, a stressor in your life, like maybe you lost a job or maybe you didn't, or had a stressful thing, almost went to a car accident, that creates oxidation, all the way up to getting exposed to nuclear radiation. One of my colleagues that we'll introduce in the series, that, um, you know, she was exposed to a lot of nuclear radiation, other people, could be heavy metals that can influence this here. Um, also, your genetics. Um, some people have fast metabolisms. Some people have slow metabolisms. Um, the usage of drugs, whether they're recreational or pharmaceutical, can have influence. If you're undergoing chemotherapy, for example, you're going to have a massive burn rate on these resources that are taxing you and why so many people that are dealing with cancer and getting treatments are using our programs in order to offset some of the damage that's being done from the treatment. Now, going back to this is, if you recall from our earlier s section, we said most people are running with maybe half a bucket 
full of these resources. And they're only taking enough of maybe one or two things to kind of manage this lifestyle. But ultimately, as we age, what tends to happen is our lifestyle tends to diminish. We slow down. We stop doing as much. We don't have as much energy or physical vitality. And to me, that just wasn't acceptable. I was like, I, I want to live bigger, faster, stronger, and I want to feel better doing it without running myself into the ground. I ran myself into the ground years ago, and I said, never again. So what we suggest is that people going through the process that we recommend, they fill up the bucket. They get lots of oxygen, water. They get enzymes, protein, they get all these things. Ideally, you're going to take at least 90 days, at least three months to you know, focus on what we call almost therapeutic dosages of this, like high levels. Where do we get this theory? Well, there was a guy by the name of Linus Pauling. You probably heard of him. He was the two-time two Nobel Prize winner that was famous for vitamin C. Now, what was interesting about Linus Pauling is that he found and discovered that if you took high levels of vitamin C, which was a very, very strong antioxidant, you were able to eradicate a whole lot of conditions. And some of these were serious medical conditions. And so what he believed is that you fill up the resources by super saturating with vitamin C, and then when you got the runs, you'd cut it down, and you'd cut it down, and you'd cut it down until you were just dealing you only had to replace what you were utilizing in your lifestyle. So basically, the, the, the concept here is that you fill your bucket up with all of this good stuff. And by doing this, now you only have to replace whatever you're using. Okay, so this means that you're operating from a full bucket. So the, the, the transition period in regards to your metabolism is that you've got to do this long enough to fill up the resources so that you start to actually feel the difference in your own life. What I call, it's a, an experiential certainty. All of a sudden, you're able to have lifestyle-based improvements that are significant. You're less tired or you have more energy or you don't have the energy crash in the afternoon or maybe um, you find that you now feel like exercising more or now you notice that your body fat's going down much faster than it was before. You're building more muscle even though you're doing the same diet. So when it comes to your metabolism, some people, they, they're, they're, they have a sluggish metabolism. So this is where they would increase their lifestyle related to exercise. Some people like myself, you know, exercise and dieted myself into a state of dis-ease, if you will, when I went to the Mr. Universe the first time. And so I had to start boosting up this side. Most people are on that side of the equation. Most people, are their lifestyles have exhausted this because we're not getting these things from our dietary habits. We're not getting these things from the foods that we're eating. And the demands of our lifestyles are going up biochemically maybe not physically. So ultimately, you want regular sustained exercise. This gets your metabolism into the optimal zone. Now remember, one of the big things and uh, that I think people misinterpret is there's an optimal level of everything. There's an optimal level of, of, of food, optimal, uh, optimal level of diet, of exercise, of everything. Too much of anything is not good and not enough is even worse. So what we're looking at is if you take about 90 days or three months, three months, some people call it 12 weeks. That's why we've included actually 84 lessons. 84 lessons is exactly 12 weeks. So you can do a lesson a day, do the products every day, follow the recommendations that we have in your daily uh, regimen and those, those habits that we talk about. And what you do is you boost this all up and then you decide once you had a full bucket, how much you want to live life. If you want to turn up the gas, then you alter how much of this product you take at that point. If you decide that you're okay, you can now diminish the amount because you have a full bucket. You don't need to be pushing more over the edges. So if you understand that, this here we've applied over and over and over with you know thousands of our clients. It's a fantastic model. And it's why we also provide 60 day money back guarantees for our products. Because we know by the time you hit 30 to 60 days, you should be feeling your bucket being filled back up. That's the beauty of it. You start feeling that and you start to notice as you go, hey, wow, I feel a lot better. And that's our goal for you. So 
that's how we're talking about uh, metabolism and how it relates. Metabolism is directly related to lifestyle. And oftentimes you'll make choices, and you don't even realize this, unconsciously not doing the things that you could do because you're diminished in some of these. So it's not your fault. But we do have the solution, but you got to take action. So uh, that's the bucket theory for today. We'll see you on the next lesson.